Hey there, boys and girls. Today, I'm going to take you through the history of my favorite motorcycle, the iconic Harley Davidson Fat Boy. Because if there's one thing I know, it's a fat boy. Not that kind of fat boy. There we go. That's better. Now, if we're going to talk about the Fat Boy, we've got to go way back a little over 30 years, and we've got to talk about the guy who is responsible for bringing the Fat Boy to the public. And that's this guy. Willie G. Davidson, the son of former Harley Davidson President William H. Davidson and the grandson of Harley Davidson co-founder William A. Davidson. He is the father of the Fat Boy. He may not know much about hair, but he does know about motorcycles. Now, about 1988 and 89, Willie G took a prototype of that fat boy down to Daytona Bike Week. The idea was, as I understand it, was to get an idea of what people would think of this new bike, and it appeared to be a hit. So the 1990 fat boy was born. The Fat Boy debuted in 1990. Its defining characteristic is its front and rear solid cast disc wheels. It also featured the first use of shotgun exhaust and had flared fenders. It drew attention with its monochromatic silver paint and silver powder coated frame set off with yellow detailing. And of course, we can't forget that iconic logo that still is on the bike today. Now the 1990 Fat Boy was a gray bike, a fat bike. It had the kind of swept back fenders. It had shotgun exhaust. It had those big solid wheels that have been a staple of the Fat Boy since it first came out. It also had an 80 inch, or 80 cubic inch Evolution engine with a five speed transmission. Now that brings me to the emblem on the fuel tank. Um, that emblem almost appears to be a kind of a nod to the U.S. Air Force. And actually, um, one of the stories, I'm not sure whether it's rumor or not, was where the name Fat Boy came from. Um, the two bombs that were dropped on Japan in World War II were the Fat Man and the Little Boy. And some people say that it was the combination Fat Boy of those two names that is where the name came from. And I don't think you would get anybody today coming out and saying, yes, that was the case, or there'd probably be a new name for the fat boy. But that's the word on the street. Now, in 1991, the fat boy would be catapulted into the mainstream. And that was done by a little movie called Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And that's also where I got my first glimpse of the fat boy. When Arnold walked out of that bar, dressed in leather, with bad to the bone playing, and he got on that bike and tore out of there, I was like, man, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And that's when I decided right then and there, was I gotta get a fat boy someday. And that led to the fat boy becoming a very popular model um, with waiting lists that stretched, I think, a year or more. Now, the Fat Boy remained relatively unchanged from its inception in 1990 till around 1999, save for a few things like uh, different paint jobs, things like that. Now, I actually had uh, a 1995 uh, Fat Boy. It was black, um, was the 80-inch Evo engine, and I love that bike. Unfortunately, that's about the only bike that I don't have any pictures of, but... I love that bike, but like I say, stayed somewhat unchanged up until around 1999, and that's when the twin cam was born. Now with the twin cam, also came fuel injection somewhere in there. Um, when the bikes first started coming out with the twin cam, it was a twin cam 88 cubic inch engine, and you could get them in fuel injected and carbureted. And I know this because the very first brand new bike that I ever bought off the showroom floor was a pearl white 
2002 Fat Boy and it was carbureted. Now the twin cam Fat Boy went through a few different uh, displacement changes while the twin cam engine was available. You had the twin cam 88 in I think the 1999 model year. You had the 96 cubic inch, which I believe is for the 2007 model year. And you had the 103 cubic inch for the 2012 model year. And I had a couple of bikes um, with the twin cam engines. And if there's one thing you can say about that engine is it ran hot. And I mean really hot. You'd burn the hair off your thighs with those things. Also in around 2006, 2007, the Fat Boy ended up getting the six speed transmission. Now other than the displacement changes with the twin cam, there was a couple of other models that did come out in the twin cam era. In 2005, a 15th anniversary version was sold with a Screamin' Eagle engine, special paint, and custom wheels. And in 2010, the Fat Boy Low was introduced and advertised as a darker, lower, meaner version of the original. It featured the lowest seat height of any Harley motorcycle at the time. Now I had a 2013 Fat Boy Low. Um, the reason it was called the Fat Boy Low was because of the seat height. At the time, it was the, the lowest seat height of any uh, available production Harley Davidson and uh, I got to say it was a it was a it was a great bike it was advertised as being that lower meaner batter type model and uh, it was great 2017 marked the end of the classic fat boy and in came the new styling and the Milwaukee 8 engine in 2018, the Fat Boy went through its biggest change yet with a redesigned soft tail frame, Showa front and rear suspension, and a new Milwaukee 8 engine. So now, not only was the twin cam history and the M8 in, also going out the window was the coating. No longer would the Fat Boy be known as the FLSTF will now be known as the FLFB for the 107 cubic inch engine and the FLFBS for the 114 cubic inch engine. Now for the 2018 model year, Harley Davidson would produce a fat boy with a stiffer chassis and lighter than the previous models. They would also change the suspension, including instead of having two shocks, you now have one directly underneath the seat along with a preload adjustment on the side so that you can change the suspension on the go. Also among the changes was the tire size. You went to a 160 in the front and a 240 in the back along with Lakester rims. Now I love the design of the new Fat Boys. Uh, in my opinion, they are far superior to the other models of the past. Now, of course, that's just my opinion. I'm sure it's a contentious issue and there's lots of people out there who would much prefer the old styling. However, for me, I love the new. I mean, um, for the 2021 year, um, they chromed out that, that bike and I think it looks a lot better than the satin finish that they had before. And also for 2021, you can only get the fat boy in the 114 cubic inch engine. The new Fat Boy with um, the new suspension uh, with the shock right under the seat, I have to say it's the smoothest riding uh, Harley I've ever been on. Um, I think it's it's great and I love the preload that I can, I can change that anytime I want. I think it's far superior. Uh, another thing about the new models that I really like is the fact that they move the oil tank from under the seat to the bottom of the bike. Because if you had a twin cam, which I had two Fat Boys and a Road King, you can definitely tell the difference in the heat. So there you have it. My history of uh, the iconic Harley-Davidson Fat Boy. 
It's my favorite bike. I would get another one if I could afford it. It's a great all-around bike. I highly recommend it. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. Little something different I thought I'd put together. If you enjoyed it, obviously like, share, subscribe. And if you want to see more history videos, it was kind of fun making it. I'd, I'd love to. If anybody wants to put something in the comments below about it, that'd be great. But for now, hope you enjoyed the history of the fat boy. We'll see you later.